Hey everybody, it's uh, Batjack JW, and you're tuned into a chat. So thanks for listening. Uh, being here, I, uh, the uh, newest radio show is up, uh, episode one ninety three. I, I that's crazy to think that you know that's ninety three Saturdays, and we haven't missed one. <laughs> Um, it definitely a schedule to keep, uh, you know, 93 episodes and keep, and, and also, you know, just always remembering to, to make sure you keep going amongst other videos that we're producing. Uh, so that's always fun. Anyhow, um, I wanted to thank you all that have been supporting me on Patreon. I, I really do appreciate that. That is, uh, a great big help to to see and uh it's it's amazing i I mean I really can't thank you guys enough that and I hope that uh, I'm trying to and uh, forgive me I'm still trying to figure out how exactly to set it up it works and everything i mean there's there should be video content on there that you should have access to that is not on the on the youtube channel uh that is different so that um that's how it should be. Uh, I, I hope it is like that. I don't know. Again, I, I'm having trouble just trying to figure out how to set it up. But it was really um, heartwarming for me to see that, man, that, there was quite a bit of you that it was awesome to see that you guys supported me and uh, went over there just from just doing this alone. So I really appreciate that. And um, I wanted to also say, uh, Rods, if you're listening, Rods, I know you have sent me a message um, about some t-shirts. I, for some reason, I have been locked out of my email. And I was going to email you back. But for some reason, I'm, I'm locked out of my email and I can't figure it out. I have to, I don't know. I got to get a hold of my, uh, one of my computer friend tech <laughs> guys and figure it out. Um... That's, uh, so, uh, <laughs> um, I'm not a computer savvy person, I, I really, a lot of times I struggle with it, but, uh, anyway, um, on the other hand, some news, somebody sent me this message, and I actually remember reading, uh, some time ago, that it was supposed to take an effect, but then it seemed like it kind of withered off, but then now it seems like it's, uh, made a resurgence, and it's hopefully gonna be true, and uh, it'll open it up that the CMP is supposed to be getting 1911s from the from the military, uh, old surplus 1911s like the like the uh, carbines and the garands. So I really hope that happens because man, I love those guns, but they're so expensive. People want so much. The people that have them, they really they just want so much money for them. It's ridiculous. So, I'm really excited for CMP to open them up and uh, we can get our hands on some of them. Uh, so, I, I just, I really hope that happens. Uh, now, I know that you have to be kind of a member of the CMP uh, or something like that. I'm not sure exactly how to become a member. I think you have to join a gun club of some sort. So, but never fear is what I believe also is the market will be flooded with them. So you will be able to get your hands on them. I, I'm assuming, you know, at some point here or here or there or somewhere in the market, they'll be floating around. Uh, even, even some of your local mom and pop gun shops will probably be able to have a connection with the CMP. Uh, so always check out mom and pop and they'll probably be able to get you one. Uh, when it comes out, and of course, the great thing is we we assume, um, knock on wood, right, uh, <laughs> that they will not be uh, high priced. I, I assuming you know what six hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks, something like that, uh, possibly, depending on its condition and what you what you can get. Uh, I I don't know if you're going to be able to choose what brand you want or what brand you can get. I'm not sure. But uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, I'm really excited for it because every time I would go to, go to, you know, look at one or try to buy another one, it, it was just the prices were ridiculous. Now the one I own, I didn't pay very much for it. I uh, it was a, a couple of good buddies of mine that got it for me, so you know it was just uh, 
it, I, I really got lucked out with mine. I really did. I, I really, uh, I got very lucky with owning mine because it was a gift, you know, kind of a, a gift in a sense from a couple of buddies that they uh, they went ahead and found me one. So you know, I was able to acquire it for a very low price. So, uh, the, you know, I that's the thing, you know, too. If you, you I, I'm, you know, even I'm a, I'm a gun collector, but. Uh, I, at the same time, I, I always feel like there there is a, a thing about when you collect guns like that. You know, you don't want to you want to be careful what you pay for them because if you pay, you know, the top dollar, say, you know, the thing is going, you know, like the book value or whatever says, oh yeah, they're worth like twenty five hundred dollars. You know, you go out and pay twenty five hundred dollars. Well, now you've paid the premium, and now you're never going to be able to get that. You know, I mean, if you sell it, if you ever go to sell it. Uh, you know, you hope you break even. It's, it's so you always want to buy low, so you can, you know, you can sell it for a little bit more than what you got into it. That's always the goal. Speaking of book value, um, you know, the thing is, it's only worth what somebody will pay you for it too. I see. I've been into uh, living out here. I've been to enough gun shows to know that. There's a lot of it is the same people, the same booths, the same stuff, and it's it's overpriced. Uh, for instance, I, I came across a table. A guy had a FEG high power. Now, um, for those of you who don't, don't know, the FEG high powers are the Hungarian high powers. They're imported. They're, they're not terribly expensive. Uh, I, I picked up, I used to have one. I regret selling it. I, I really do. Uh, I sold it to a good friend of mine. I, I don't know if he still has it. Maybe I'll try to uh, weasel it out of him. Um, but uh, they're great high powers. They're excellent, but they're inexpensive. That was the beauty of it. It was like owning the high power, the Browning high power, without paying the thousand bucks for it. it they were like three hundred bucks or something like that. I, I I'm pretty sure I paid like three hundred or two seventy five for mine uh, off a gun broker. And so, uh, when I uh, when I went to a gun show, I saw a guy with one, and he wanted seven hundred dollars for it. <laughs> I mean, I remember I mean, you could buy an authentic Browning for that, <laughs> and then he had a Browning, and he wanted fifteen hundred for it. Um, but like I said, it, it's the same. The the that table every I've gone to. Uh, I remember that table, same guy, same gun, same price has been there three, four different gun shows. So, and nobody's buying. So that's the thing is you don't you don't want to get stuck with the thing and then you, you've you know you can't sell it or you can't get rid of it because you know, so you want too much for it. Um, that's the thing. It's scary with collectibles. Um, I have really uh, back in uh, when I was building the collection and going after a lot of different guns, man. I was really uh, but luckily what saved me was I never had a lot of money. So, uh, I have friends. I have friends in the business that, uh, if they acquired one, they would hold it for me, and then I would just give them some money here and there, and then eventually pick it up. Uh, and of course, being friends, they, you know, the prices were always really low. Uh, you know, they never, uh, they never jacked it up. And of course, that was for me also finding the right ones. A lot of times, a, a gun broker, you know. So, um, going on gun broker and and really just like. You know, I think I bought my like, for instance, my Colt Detective Special. I think I bought it for like four hundred eighty bucks. Uh, it's just by waiting and searching, uh, you know. And uh, so you, you just got to be patient with it because I would hate to have paid top premium prices and then you know having to sell them for a lot less than what you paid for them. It's just like if you ever did go to sell them, but. Uh, like with the CMP, with the 1911s, I really, I hope that uh, it it puts them on the market and they're reasonable price so that uh, us people that, you know, like, I, I, I would love to own a couple different ones. And it would be, it would make it a very much more affordable for us to own them, have them, play with them, and go out to the range and shoot them. I mean, I think that should, you know, that, that... I'd love for that. That's sharing. I, you know, in a sense, I, I would love the people that always like, you know, there are people that can't, 
they, if they couldn't have one, they maybe you know they weren't lucky enough to to pick one up, or you know, or they just can't afford one. Like I can't afford, I wouldn't, I couldn't afford one now, not the not the prices. But uh, you know, it just uh, I would like to have everybody be able to have access to them at a reasonable price. That that would be just awesome. It would free up the market on them a little bit because it just seems like. I, I don't understand like why they're so expensive, you know. And it's like the people that do have them in their shops, they want an arm and a leg for them. And so I, I really am hoping this opens up the market so we can all enjoy them and get and pick up one for a reasonable price, and we can all have one in our collection that we can take out and shoot and enjoy and uh, just kind of have it <laughs> a piece of history. So I, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, got my coffee this morning and everything. So, uh, so the inland, it's uh, I got it right here. It's uh, I like having it because it's uh, it, it is like having the World War II 1911, and um, you know I can mess around with it and and horse around, you know, watch Steve McQueen and the Hunter and <laughs> have it on the coffee table. And, you know, to me, that's a really cool, that's, that's what it is. It's about for me being able to just kind of horse around with them a little bit, you know, and, and have them watch the movie and, and enjoy it. And if it slid off the coffee table or something, or if it got a scratch on it, it's, I'm not worried about it. That, that was my main thing. Um, the paint job is holding up really well. I really like it. Uh, I'm glad that that was a great, happy uh, surprise, uh, you know, th just a chance. And it's, uh, you know, some people that were like, oh, my gosh, you, you paint, you, you would paint a gun, you know, spray paint a gun. It's not permanent. Uh, you can always wash it off with paint thinner or, um, you know, acetone or something. It's not like you've permanently, you know... <laughs> ruined the thing or something, you know, so, um, it can always come up, Mr. Holster painted his shotgun, you know, he's, <laughs> there's a lot of people that do it, uh, I'm happy I did it. it, it turned out, it made the thing that much better, that, that I was really disappointed with, with Inland, uh, the color change, that was just like, uh, to me, it was like, wow, why'd they do that, that didn't make any sense to me, so, also, uh, here's the other thing, a little uh, little tick tip bit uh, that I did. The grips on it are are as close as you're gonna get. They're great. They're the brown plastic uh, grips, which is that's what they issued out back then. Uh, if you look at the original ones, uh, I believe what is it? Uh, if I heard uh, some people talk about a keys grips or something, uh, the original grips are kind of a reddish brown. They and it is just due to the type of plastic or whatever they were using back then, but they are. And probably the age, too. I mean, you know, here we are looking at these pistols, what, you know, I mean, 90, 70, 80 years later, you know, something. So, um, what I went ahead and did was I took my grips and I, um, I stained them with fabric dye. Uh, so they have a reddish uh, tint to them, and they're a little bit darker. So they're kind of a reddish-brown darker uh, look so they they kind of closely or a little bit more represent the the old sky the old style and I love one of my favorite things is altering my gun a little bit so where it's different than what you normally get on the market I, I really enjoy doing that kind of thing with two certain guns you know I'm obviously not going to sit there and take a, a collectible gun and start you know doing stuff like that to it uh, but something like this, you know, it just I changed it up to where it's it's mine now. You know, I've done things to it that it, it makes it mine. You know, I stained the grips, I painted it, I uh, I blued the barrel hood, so stuff like that. Yeah, I, I've I've done that. It's the same with like my rooster shooter, the Cimarron. I, I've you know, it came to me in acid wash finish, and I uh, I rust blued it and did the finish myself. And I'm, I'm happy with it. And, and that thing makes it mine. It, uh, it's the only one like it. So it's, But uh, I like doing that. It's really cool. So if you got a you know modern type gun, that's a you know I always say it's you know it's like a one of those uh, dime a dozen kind of guns. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, um, you know, as far as uh, you know 
everything else is going. Uh, you know, things have been, like I said, it, it's been uh, it's been rough uh, for me out here. Uh, so right now, so far, it's uh, it's been kind of rough. Um, you know, uh, you gotta say, I gotta say, you know, it's just uh, it's always it's like a catch twenty two, you know. It really is. Uh, again, I, I talked about it in the last uh, chat and everything like that. You know, it's it's been tough for me. Uh, some of the things that are really tough is uh, there's things that I the small things that I enjoyed doing uh, back in Hawaii that I find myself not doing out here, uh, and I, I think it's it, it I grown to appreciate those things more and. I uh, I will say I think at some point here I uh, that's my phone going off uh, I'm I need to I rather it be on vacation or you know last resorts uh, a move back. Um, I need to get back at, at some point and see my friends. Uh, they are, uh, they, they're just, yeah, I talked to a buddy, a really, you know, close buddy of mine last night. I talked to him. I, I've known the guy for probably 13 years or something like that. I, I don't know, probably longer. Um. You know, and it's it's amazing, you know, just to see your buddies growing up, and he's, you know, he, he's got a family now, and, uh, but, uh, I mean, I'm not talking he just did this, but, you know, it's just, uh, I, I realize how much I miss him, I really do, you know, just, uh, and um, he used to invite me a lot to barbecues, and I, looking back, it's, uh, I used to kind of, not in. I don't like big crowds, big parties and stuff. So that was a, a little bit difficult for me to be around sometimes uh, to make that jump and, and be around a large crowd of a bunch of people I don't know. But you know, he was talking to me too. He's you know about you know he's saying that you know even he now when he does barbecues, just like he just kind of wants to have his core friends there. And uh, I, I understand that, and I also looking back, and it's like, I wish I would have showed up to more barbecues, you know, showed up to more of the the, the hangouts. So, you know, it's just things you take for granted, I guess. Um, you know, I took I took for granted my job. I, you know, ultimately had a the job I had was. Uh, just, I mean, amazing and perfect. It's, you know, ran the show. I had the, you know, I had my job. I, uh, I dealt with stuff I enjoyed. Uh, the people weren't that bad. So, you know, it's. Uh, but at the same time, you know, out here, it's. I got, I I got friends here now, and I've. Uh, I got to do things out here that, you know, I couldn't do in Hawaii. Uh, you know, I couldn't, uh, I, I got to go to western towns and that, that, you know, and play a cowboy and shoot blanks and go out and do, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, I even carried a gun for a little while just to feel what that feels like. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that I got to do. Yeah, but... Uh, so it is again. It's like catch twenty two. You know, it's like, but uh, I miss my buddies. I really do. My family is. Uh, my family's really close to me. Uh, my mom again, like I mentioned, but uh, you know, and, and those of you that have been following here, um, you know, I, I miss Cody. 
I miss them. I, I really do. And those hangouts and stuff, man. Um, I, I I feel like it really uh, it made a great great stuff. It made great videos. It really did. I used to sit there and make a glove or construct a glove, and he'd uh, he'd come over and <laughs> hey man, check this out. You know, um, Cody's a good guy. Um, Cody is one of the few friends I got that is younger than me, and I really like the guy. Um, he's really cool. I, for, as for me, I, I generally uh, I, I hang out with older older friends, uh, and just because that's just kind of how it turned out. Um, but Cody is a, an exception because Cody is he's a really good guy. He's a really good-hearted guy. And, um, you know, down at my job, I, you know, I miss seeing, uh, my friend Moonshine. Uh, you guys seen him in some vlogs. He's, you know, he used to come in, we used to talk, talk about some cool stuff. And then, of course, my friends up the hill at the compound. Go out and hang out with them and eat some food and watch TV and shoot guns and blow stuff up. <laughs> uh... So, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a tough one, you know. It really is. It's it's tough. Um, going through a lot out here, uh, you know, a lot of uh, struggles, and it's it hasn't been easy. It really hasn't. Um, and I honestly I never struggled with financials as much as I ever did out here. It's been really rough on that, on that end, and you know, unfortunately, the you know ran into you know a a job that was not uh, not good, and they laid me off, and that's it. It was like okay, so it's been I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. You know, I'm trying to keep my head up, guys. I really am. I'm trying to keep my head up, and I'm trying to keep strong, and uh, just see, I, I, you know, just try to hold out a little, a little longer, and hope things will improve. You know, uh, and if it came to the case of, you know, just going back home, it, you know, it it comes to that, you know, and and it's it's gonna hurt. It's going to hurt both ways, um, but, you know, and I don't look at it as running back home with my tail between my legs, I, you know, I, you know, be it whatever, I, I mean, I don't have any, you know, it's, I don't, I don't have that feeling about it, you know, even if I did do that, it would be just, uh, you know, it would just be a while. I tried it, you know, and I, I guess I, it didn't work out for me. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I really want to keep my head up and, and try to try to improve this and try to see if, it, if things improve. Um, you know, right now, the biggest thing is financials. Um, just, you know, I don't want to get to the point where I can't, you know, afford rent anymore. You know, then, you know... I have to make that emergency call back home and um, have my friends <laughs> ship me back. <laughs> and then I'll have to, I'll have to pay them back. <laughs> but that, but see there again, that that's the kind of buddies I have. You know, that, that's that's that's, you know, and I'm not you know trying to use them as a crutch or anything. But I, I just you know, I, I don't want it to to come to that. But. Anyway, but I'm trying. We're trucking along here, and we're we're keep going. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support I get from you guys. Um, it's kind of neat. You, you know, you guys are my friends too, and you you follow me, and you're all over the place. You're all over in different states. Uh, you're you know, some of you in different countries. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Anyway, I'll be signing off for now, and uh, thank you for all your support, guys.